Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another stay fishy adventure with a little bit of planning Quite a bit of effort and some good fortune we have arrived i don't know if we're here or we're there really it's a matter of perspective but one thing is for certain we got friends we got a river we got a boat load of stuff are we loaded for bear or trout that's the real question bear trout we got muffins we got all the gear in the world and we got a boat assisting us down the river and we are off on another amazing adventure stick around everybody this one's gonna be good Look at that vision the of a man. Service. The vision of a man on the water. On today's adventure, everybody, we embark on a 48 hour journey down 47 miles of river. I'm not making that up. That's a true fact. The wind's blowing, the sun is out, and I have no clue where this day is headed. First things first, though, we have to navigate some gnarly white water. And the beauty of white water and the sport of white water is we share it with friends. Back behind us, we have uh, Nate's nephew, Dylan. And this is actually his first time rowing down this section of river, which is a monumental moment in any young rower's life. And today, I'm gonna have the privilege of taking this young man through one of the gnarliest rapids in this section of river, and really in this section of the state. Nerves are high, tension's high. I just wanna catch a fish, honestly. Okay, so as we just touched on just a second ago, some of the biggest hurdles on day one in between us getting to our camp is multiple class three and four rapids. The first one being a very big class four. So I'm gonna hop boats. I'm gonna go over here with Dylan. I'm gonna show him the way down. Cross your fingers, everybody. This is gonna get rowdy. Okay. All right. Come on, lid. Let's go. All right. The new vessel. <laughs> Dylan, hello. how are you, bud? Great job oh, great. up till this point, but we'll take it from here. Here we go, boys. This is the scary one. This is the scary one. This is what stands in between us. Good fishing, good food, and a really nice camp. Whoa, behold, the pale white horse. Uh, getting jittery. Let's go. All right, here we go, everyone. So, key is to try to start pretty much about 15, 20 feet off of this right bank. Stay inside of this right rock. And you want to be looking for the knuckles right off the bat. So you'll see as we come around the corner here, you'll see two big boils. You want to split the knuckles. That's the key. So you see right here in front of us, there's two rollers. There's one on the right, one on the left. You want to split the knuckles. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Now I get my fair angle right, then I'm going to turn and send it. Now I'm going to send it. We're alive! We're alive! And look where we're at. Wow, now the fun begins. Okay, made a little trip up from the boat. This looks really good. Let's see if there's anything here for us. Ooh, nice cast, Jordan. And fell in the river. Here we go. Ooh, this feels good. Come on, I'm a little sculpin. I'm swimming, I'm swimming. I'm so innocent and poor. Okay. So my plan for today mainly is going to be working the sculpin jig. You guys have seen me use these before. Uh, you've seen me tie them up in videos. I'm gonna work these sculpin jigs and hardware. So I got a Panther Martin in my pocket as well. And I'm gonna kind of just double hit everything as we move down the river and stop at different spots of the boat, which is one of my favorite ways to do it because you actually get to thoroughly cover the hole, which we all know is very important. But I'm gonna pretty much through every hole work the sculpin jig and then go back through with a spinner. Kind of good to be versatile that way. Um, if it was time, if there was fish hitting dry flies on the surface, that's what I would be doing. I like to adapt to whatever I think is gonna work the best. And I know right now, these fish are coming off of the spawn. They do an early season spawn when the water's still cold and then they want to fatten up so they're going to be eating the sculpin jigs plus they're going to be protecting their spawning beds i'm not going to fish on the spawning beds but the thing is is once they're done spawning they're going to start moving around in the river system looking for big meals and that is this guy right here so let's hopefully get one it's some nice fishing here i know it okay oh got the mossy stuff on the way in let me switch. Panther Martin going on. Going with a size nine today. It's a little bit bigger. We're looking for bigger fish. One and two, it's pretty high water right now. We're coming off of a spring runoff high water event. So we're gonna want something a little bit heavier so that we're getting down. So I'm gonna do a little trick here to save the fish. I'm gonna take off a couple of my hook points. 
is a very important piece of the of puzzle here. Catching and releasing trout, much, much better with a single point hook. Some people might think some rivers are only for fly fishing, but in my opinion, as long as you're using a single hook and it's appropriate to the size of fish that you're catching. I think side wash hooks even work better. And so what I've done here basically is just make my own side wash hook rather than uh, put one on. It's because actually we forgot them. The stores were closed when we were on our way over here and I couldn't find them anywhere. So I made my own side wash hook just like that. Very effective, very easy, and it's a lot better on the fish. So if you care about them, if you care at all, you'll do it. Okay, here we go. A little upriver approach. Got him, got him, nice fish. Right as I move, oh, he's gone. Oh, dang it. Really nice fish, that was the second time I went through there, second time I hooked him. Crap, really nice chromey. Darn it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep switching back. I'm getting down into this log structure here. Really nice big tree. I kinda, I say I messed this one up already. That fish is not gonna wanna bite again. He had this little freaking cove on lockdown. But what he might do is bite a jig. Oh, no, I just got hit again. Oh, I got him, ah! Oh! Okay, there's a nice one there. He didn't feel the hook that time either. I'm gonna go back in there with the jig. See if he'll bite it. Should. Oh, man. Come on, baby. You guys can tell here, I'm kind of staying up and away from the bank here, uh, mainly for one for visibility. I can see all that snags, all those snags and all that structure out there pretty well. And it allows me to kind of get my jig down and in there without losing my jig. But that looks like really good spinner water. So I'm going back to the spinner. Yes, just a little guy. Oh man, he hit hard though. Just a little, looks like a little hatchery steelhead smolt. Had him really good, easily comes out. And we're ready to go. Bye buddy. Sweet. Fish number one of the day. Let's see if we can get another one. <gasps> just got hit already. Try one a little further. Oh. Got him again, from the high, full, from the vantage point. From the vantage point, I actually saw this one jump a second ago. Another small, not what we're looking for, but it's a fish on the board, number two. Another hatchery small. Later, buddy. All right, two fish in hand. Time to walk down the river a little bit. Meet back up with the boys. They dropped me off and floated around the corner of the next hole, so hopefully they got on some fish. But two fish in hand so far, three or four nice ones lost. I lost the biggest one. I got one more spot I can see down below me here. See this nice island. Got this little back eddy here, a nice little spot right here. I'm gonna try to hit both of them. See if I can't pull one out with the jig again. Already successful day, I'm loving it. We're looking for a much bigger fish. We're looking for a resident red side, uh, which is a rainbow trout. And I think personally, these are trout that live in the river system. And they, they basically are a trout that lives in such a, a healthy ecosystem. Being that there's enough food, there's enough bugs in that area, which this one is when you get water in a desert equals bugs. That's kind of the, the equation there. Water plus desert equals bugs. You guys remember that one. What happens is it kind of creates this little oasis for them. Um, wow, that's fishy. I better, I better crawl down there. Creates this little oasis. Sorry, scroll moments left and right. Uh, and I don't even remember what I was talking about, so let's go fishing. Ooh, this looks good. Oh, there's a hit. Dang. Real nice little tail out here. Oh, got him. Got him. That's a better fish, too. Stay down. Stay down. Oh, he's out of the water. He pulled a little shiny move. Ooh, that's a pretty fish. Still think it's, yep, it's another small, beautiful steelhead small, about six, seven inches. Again, her six, not mine. Nice, oh, he's gone. Good fish. Oh, there he is, got him, got him. Oh, that's a, I think that's a trout, not the trout that time. Oh, it's a really nice trout. Oh, he nailed it. Oh, that's a really good one. That's a PB for the trip. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, baby. Little, look at that thing. Wow. Another beaut, Clark. Just a beautiful specimen. That is just gorgeous. Look at that big eye on him. Beautiful red side. I love their fins. Later, buddy. Oh, he's just hanging out with us. Look at that. 
Underwater shark! Oh, oh! Dude, this, this fish wants to be famous. Well, some really good fish so far on day number one. Um, it's, it's surprising to see so many hatchery swans. Not really for the time of year that we're doing this, but it goes to show how healthy they are. It's a very good thing. If those fish have a long way to out migrate. Another big reason why you want to switch to the sidewash hooks and stuff, because we're not only catching those resident fish that, that are going to be living here all the time, and, and again, spawning and procreating and getting caught more in the river. So we want to take good care of them, but those little guys, the steelhead have to go a long ways out to the ocean and then come all the way back in a couple years as big steelhead. So we want to make sure to take care of them with those single hooks. So whether you got to break your hook, Use the one hook, you see it works just as well if it gets inside of them. So switch them out. It's better for the fish and it's better for the future. But it's been a good day. I could tell as we're going down river here, it's starting to get a little bit windy. Stuff's starting to pick up. And our destination in camp is still quite a ways down river. So but let's get to rowing. We need to make a lot of headway. We've been fishing a lot this morning so far. So it's been a great morning though. Let's get going. It's not complete yet, but we have arrived at our destination. Take a gander. Not bad. Uh, as you can see by the wind capped waves out there, the freaking literally water is blowing up river from this white water because the wind's blowing so hard. Didn't really film a ton other than some uh, time lapses over the last couple hours because it was so freaking windy. Couldn't stop the fish. All we could do is push against the wind, keep our oars in the water, and we finally made it. Everyone's a little sunburnt. A little hungry. Let's get camp set up. It's time for an evening bite. Let's take a quick look at what we got. Oh my god. Wildflowers, windswept grass, trees. This is an absolute beautiful camp. I think we'll do kitchen here. We got all this wind block. You can still see that wind's whipping out there. Got great spots for the tents. Little, what do you think? I think it looks fantastic. And dinner with a view. We are in a very unique formation in this part of the country and um, and basically in comparison to the rest of the surrounding geology, this earth is much, much, much older. So there's fossils, sometimes there's crystals. It's just an amazing place. It's really very unique for the, the part of the country that we're in. And I could not feel more blessed right now to be with my buddies and my dog in this place right here. Okay, here it goes. Oh, oh, there he, oh, it was a stick the whole time. Got all excited over a stick. Woo. Oh, that was a fish though. Son of a gun. There he is. That's a nice fish, brother. Got a nice one on here. Sun setting, fish on, life is good. Oh, he's submarining him. He's submarining him. Old Panther Martin versus Rooster Tail. Looks like PM1. Oh, he's a jumper. Oh, he's going crazy. Oh, that's a nice freshy. Nice, pretty fresh one. About a seven incher or so, six incher. My six is not my six, not hers. Got that Panther Martin hanging out the lip. What a beauty. And that's actually a hatchery. That's a little half pounder. So that's a that's a big hatchery smolt, uh, steelhead smolt that's hanging out in the river. Uh, what happens a lot of time is uh, conditions will be so good there's so much bug life and so much food for these fish to eat that uh, they'll actually stay in the river system for a long time and that's one of them he's on his way out to the ocean eventually but let's get him on his way later buddy Woohoo! nice job joel first fish of the evening well you hungry i think it's time we go make some food our pork chops and our spare ribs should be marinated nicely and uh yeah time to go eat let's go get to cooking my man marlin graciously blessed us with some wild boar pork chops and spare ribs for this trip. Thank you so much, Marlin, for giving us this stuff. And I am so delighted to use or to, to cook with it. I have actually never really had the chance. I've been a couple times. My dad has gone uh, wild boar hunting and killed some. I went in Chile, as you guys saw not too long ago. But it's hard to come by this stuff, you know. Maybe if you live in the south or other parts of the country where this stuff is available, but look at the beautiful color of that. Absolutely gorgeous meat. So Let's get this other package opened up and then we have some spare ribs also we're doing a uh, authentic oriental style dinner tonight we're going to be doing wild boar bento how's that for alliteration wild boar bento wild boar bento wild boar bento Ooh, yeah oh those are beautiful 
Okay, so what we're gonna do first here, is we're just gonna, basically gonna chop them right up. I'm gonna make these nice little slivers of meat. Actually, we're gonna do a little bit of trimming first. Just get some of this stuff off of there while we want that nice, perfect, tender meat. Great looking pork though. Normally you guys, you, you see any kind of pork and it's like this whitish color and that's because there's so much fat in it. But being that these are wild boars, I think they killed these down in California, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But you can see the great, great color in it. It's got that nice reddish color, which means it's a little more lean, doesn't have quite as much fat. We're just gonna make little strips out of it for our bento. And right onto the pan we go. Okay, now it's time for the spare ribs. Ooh, it is. It is Korean style. They got them all rolled up. Oh, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be real good. Once again, I'm gonna do a little trim in here. Trim the fat, just a skosh. And then we chew it, then we chew the fat. First you trim it, then you chew it. One piece for lid man. Ooh. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna toss these right on here. Time to get seasoned up. Okay, in our bento is gonna go green beans, so I'm gonna make this simple on myself instead of going through each one. We're out here on the river trying to make the most of our time, not sit here pinching green bean ends. So I'm just gonna chop those just like that, get some nice green bean action going. I'm gonna take my green onions. I'm gonna make these into big cuts. I want big, nice, sexy chunks here. Just like you're at the Chinese restaurant. We're even gonna throw our ends in there, adds a lot of flavor. Got our pepper. One with a red pepper today because we can. This, once again, I'm gonna keep pretty big on my slices. I wanna be able to get nice half-cooked chunks. Kind of what I prefer in a bento, big pieces. Kind of almost stir-fry action. Let's get our meat seasoned up, get this cooking, and then all this will go in right at the last minute so that our veggies don't overcook. Okay, so for our seasonings, we're going with the gross cream chili sauce. I'm gonna add a pretty good scoop to that. This stuff is spicy, so don't go super crazy on it. I'm gonna go with some black pepper, a bit of the hippie cowboy. This is a little sleeper, you guys. This is a finishing salt, it's alder smoke, but I'm gonna use it in my main uh, ingredients. The reason is, it has a very nice alder smoke's flavor. Delicious, you get this stuff in Sitka, Alaska, or online. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that. It's gonna add a really nice salty touch to it because the Hippie Cowboy is not very salty. Next, I'm gonna go some soy, and then a little bit of the teriyaki glaze. Yep, I'm just gonna go pretty light on that because I don't want that stuff to burn. It'll caramelize pretty quickly and start to burn if you go too heavy on it, but let's get this thing fired up. Got this all seasoned, I'll mix it all up once it gets warm. Then it's almost time to eat. Oh yeah, this looks good. Coming together nicely. Look at that blaze and the sunset. Wow, that's wonderful, guys. What I'm gonna do first with these is I'm just gonna slide them right onto the pan. I'm not gonna worry about uh, getting them mixed in with the meat quite yet. You can see how the meat Still has some pink in it. We're still not quite done. Big thing is, especially with wild boar too, is to not overcook it. It will very, very easily get dry on you. So I got this stuff about half cooked. I'm gonna get my veggies started, but then I'm gonna blend them all together. Ooh, look at this. Hold on, ready for it? You couldn't hear it, but it happened. Okay, a little bit of sriracha saw, a little bit of the soy saw. Let's do a little Catalina wine mixer here. I don't want, again, my pork to get overcooked, so I'm gonna stack that right on top of the veggies for now, kind of give it a little hood. Okay, let that do its thing. Now that this is all done, we're gonna glaze it up. Oh, that looks good. I'm hungry. Let's give it a try at least. A good chef always tries his food. Never leave it up to, to fate. Good chef always tries his food. Yum. One more little glaze action. Uh, uh, uh. Is it the steak or the drizzle? Or is it the drip? Um. Got our rice ready to go? Let's eat! Mm, yep, yep. I'm gonna go one big scooper on the pooper. Yummy, wanna save some for my friends, even though I could eat it all. Forget to give yourself the bone there. You gotta give oh, the bone. Oh, I gotta give me a bone to give chew me on. The bone. They call me Bone Saw. Uh, if you can name that that movie, or what's that quote from? What movie? I'll give you five seconds. It's from Spider Man. Macho Man Randy Savage. One of his last great appearances. Okay, let's Look try at that this. In the light, guys. Mm. In the light. 
good. And because I'm a self-proclaimed good chef, I already knew it was good because I tried it. But that's really good. Let's get a green bean mm. in there. Everybody behind Look the camera right now is drooling. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. We got full bellies. Time for a little fire action. And uh, this is bed for the night. We're doing it cowboy style. Out into the stars. We did bring a tent. But it's gonna be so beautiful tonight. We're probably gonna get like mid to high 40s. Libman's gonna snug in the cot with me, but I'm going double roll. We're calling it a double roll. Take a double roll with uh, Hamachi, please. Uh, but we're gonna go just cots out under the stars. One of my favorite ways to camp in the desert. Beautiful part is this time of year out here, there's not a really hard dew in the evening time. So you don't get a lot of moisture settling on you. So you can sleep out under the stars. I like to just sit under some sort of tree, something that's gonna kind of block that that do has from falling down and, and getting me all soaking wet. And nevertheless, it's only one night out here tonight, so I know it'll be warm enough. I got my tiny dog to cuddle with. Let's go kick our feet up by the fire, and then it's time for bed. Well, what do we have here? The little. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You ready, snug bug? Okay. Time to go to bed. Night, everyone. See you in the morning. Ooh, it's a good morning. <laughs> Well, this is the scene of the crime. Me and Lidman stung bug rug all night. Beautiful morning. We got the rams back up on the hillside again. Not sure if you guys can see those, but they're up there. Right there at the tip. You can see them here. I'm going to zoom in with my phone. You guys can see them up there. Right on the crest of the ridge line. That is so cool. Wow. Cowboy coffee on! Uh, yeah! Uh, we got coffee. Some muffins on here, mama. We got some muff. We got the butter. Yeah. We got some sad dough. We got some hot sauce. He tells me, he said, all I brought was sriracha. What's up? <laughs> well, there it is. Turns out he brought sourdough too. We're looking good. Right, yeah. Woo! We got chili. Rams are still up there. See him right on the silhouette? Yeah, Man, this is cool. I gotta say, there's nothing quite like being on the river. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, kind of puts you back in perspective and, and gives you peace in the world, you know, especially rivers like this. And I'm happy to announce that Nate and I will be offering trips just like this, a little more glamorous than what we're doing here. You won't be sleeping out under the stars. We'll have wall tents. Uh, we'll have cots for you guys. We'll have five-star food um, all catered for you but him and I under Nate's Rogue Adventures are going to be offering these trips like this so get a hold of me at addictedoutfitters.com we're going to be offering trips this June and then next early April uh, and probably into May so to give you guys a chance to come out here with us enjoy this beautiful scenery enjoy this incredible place catch some amazing fish eat good food and have good laughs with friends but I have to say it's been an incredible trip so far yesterday was a little a little bit of a struggle I ended up with a really bad migraine at the end of the day but we caught fish, it was a great, great day. We ate good food. And you know what? Today's another day. A little toasted muffin brack. <laughs> oh, fine. Mm. Fine. Um, the crystallized flavors. Mm. 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 Okay, let's go fishing. Oh. So it begins, second day out here in Mother Nature. It's gonna be a good day. Pretty warm this morning already, which is perfect for what we're doing. We got an arsenal tackle. The goal today is again, similar to yesterday, we have a long ways to go and a lot of fish to catch. Once we're done catching fish, we gotta run some giant rapids and all of it should boil up to be a pretty damn good time. So let's get moving. Charge! You said it, little. Okay, here we go. It's on. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Hit it right at my feet. This fish is literally at my feet. Oh, I thought I saw him moving around there. I don't know if you guys could see the flash on the camera, but I saw one swimming around right here. I wasn't sure if it was actually what I was seeing, if it was just a reflection of light, but it was. It was a fish. Go figure. Sometimes you just gotta trust yourself. Okay, I'm over the spinner already. I'm going with the fly here with the jig. Panther Martin, sorry. And Mr. Jiggy with it. Tied up some freshies. I think I'm gonna go redhead, olive body. That's a pretty good one. Okay, gotta go. 
Oh, there he was, dang it. Just freaking pile drived it. Really gotta work these little inside banks here. Oh, really feel like there's gonna be fish on those today. Not a whole lot of, whole lot of cover for them. You know, not a lot of trees along the banks. So these shady little, shady little spots are great, great hiding spots for them. It makes a very, very interesting way to catch them too when you can really work inside these banks. It's fun. Those things will jet out and just freaking hammer you. Don't even give you a chance. You just get hammered. Okay, here goes Panther Martin. We're giving her a shot. Her right full of shot. Worked yesterday. Worked all night last night. Got my butt whooped on it. Now let's see if it'll work again. Oh, right at the bank. Oh, that was awesome. Perfect change. Oh, he almost beat himself. Oh, that was cool. Ew, ew. There he is. Good one. Good one, too. Heck yeah. Oh, that's a good fish. That's what we're looking for. That's what we were looking for right there. Yeah, baby. Oh, that's a good one. Best fish of the trip for me so far. Oh, look at that thing glistening. Glistening in the moonlight. Oh, that's pretty. Look at this. Look at that. Look at how purple that thing is. Wow. That is so cool. Best fishing trip so far for me. Later, buddy. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Okay, you may notice everybody's wardrobe has changed in the boat because we got more speed bumps to go over. Today we have three of the most dangerous rapids of the day to make it back to our trucks. We got about another 20 miles or so to make it down river. It's getting a little bit later in the day already with how much fishing that we've done. Uh, stopping takes up a lot of time, but we've got some beautiful fish and now it's time to go boating. Where does the river go? I don't know. Here it goes. Our second, second big rapid. This is class three. Woo! We've lost Dylan, which means he's either lost his mind or his senses. Maybe both. I don't know. Where do you think he put him? I have no idea. The guy <laughs> with all of our food. Uh, it's hard uh, to get lost on a river. Dylan, if you're watching this, you're fired. We've already completely <laughs> talked it over. You're fired. Uh, he's down river somewhere, but we do have some food. Actually, we got my clutch meal. No. So happy we brought it. No. We got all the ingredients we need. We need a little lunch. It's probably about five o'clock now. We got a long ways to go to one of my favorite restaurants in the world. And uh, that's what we're gonna be eating for dinner. But right now, because Dylan has all the fixings for lunch, I'm making tuna salad. Where's the bowl? There's my bowl. Thanks, Dylan. So we makeshifted the bowl. Uh, Cause we forgot a whole boat this time. That's the state fishy forgot nine of the week. But an entire boat and a man. We lost it. First things first. A little bit of the tune. A little bit of the uh, tune. This is courtesy of Blue Water Bad Boys. A little flashback to the last time we did that. That's what I'm talking about. That's by far my biggest album for. Because we don't have utensils, we use our knives, like men. Give her a, a little dollop in there, in it. Oh, that's good. Nate, you wanna thin that down a little bit for us? Oh, yeah. Mmm. Oh, it's a dream. Ah, kinda grabbed it by the boo-boo. I'm gonna do one of these. I'm just gonna kinda toss them in here. Cut, chop them up, just chop it up with the crew. If you complain about that, now I can't help you. That's why I love living off the land a little bit, filling my cupboards and stuff with some meat for the year. Because in situations like this, it really helps to have a can of something in the boat at all times. And this stuff will last in the boat for years, so. Oh, one thing I almost missed. Boy, that would've hurt. That would've hurt. What's well, dip without the queso? Just got a pretty good little helping in there. What do you guys think out there? What do you think, world? Looks amazing. Wasn't asking you. <laughs> <laughs> Little, you holding the crackers? Let's eat, boys. Sure don't taste bad. Here you go, bud. Yeah, brother. Thank you. 
We're gonna need our energy. Because even though the sun's going down, the two biggest rapids of the trip still lie ahead. Hopefully we make it before dark. That's all I'm hoping. Right. Well, we found my nephew in the training here <laughs> who got lost and had no idea we were stopping for lunch. Um, a little bit past the uh, first takeout, so the guys might be struggling to get an eddy and or take directions right now. Um, and I'm going to have to try to be nice uh, here in a moment. Let's see what we can do. Dylan, how you doing? Pretty good. What are you thinking? Huh? You look like a banana. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Do you realize you have our lunch on your boat? No. All right. <laughs> Jordan's coming into one of the bigger rapids on this stretch. It's a class three rapid. We call it Whippinacha Falls. Joel here is kind of surprised at the level of horizon line we have here. And uh, it's impressive. Ow, ow, ow! Yeah, that's some white water, brother. The first time we talked Nate into, into throwing the jig all day long, and he nails the biggest fish of the day. Oh, yeah! Right. Brother! He's even got the kipey mouth. Look at him, he almost looks like a leopard. Not a leopard, a leopard. Jig in the mouth, fish in the hand. Yeah. A jig in the mouth is better than a fish in the hand, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, that's Boy. good. Good job, brother. Thank you, man. Nice jig. Freaking A. Jig's out. Bad boy's gone. Nice. Woo -hoo -hoo! Oh. Way to freaking end it, dude. Right before sunset, just after finding Dylan, it's all coming together. Woo! Very next cast. Look at him, he's just freaking playing it out there. Dude, that's a bull trap. That might be a bull. Oh my God, it's huge. It's another whale. Nate got another whale on the jig. Holy moly. It's the same fish. Just kidding. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's such a beautiful, beautiful fish. Good job, Nate. What a stunner. Jig in the mouth. Wow. Okay, here he goes. Oh, cool. Nice job. Yeah. Hell yeah! Two monsters! Oh, you knew we couldn't give up yet. Way to go, bro. Okay. <laughs> nice. Flashing out there. A little bit on the smaller side. They're downgrading, but it is a beautiful rainbow again. Not a small. <laughs> go. Nice job. We're all getting our lucky last fish of the day. There's a man eater up ahead. More buoys, Hoopa. Oh, that's looking mighty man eater -y. Look at that bad boy. She's got a heck of a tongue on her. Yeah! What a way to end the day. What a way to end the trip. We'll see you guys at the restaurant. Hey, ladies. No, I am stuffed. This is the owner, Riverside. <laughs> edit that, that, edit that. <laughs> she fills your bellies and puts a smile on your face. What a great trip this has been, everybody. Again, if you want to go on this trip with Nate and I, be sure to go to addictedoutfitters.com, put in a trip inquiry, and we'll get you out on one of these amazing river adventures. Until next time, everybody, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.